My name is Kevin DeMackey, CEO at the Gurulosity Brand Management Institute. I'm a brand management trainer and consultant to leading consumer goods companies such as Kimberly Clark, Procter & Gamble, Kraft Heinz, Gorilla Brands, and Nestle. Today we're giving you an inside look into one of our recent training sessions on how to write a vision in your strategic plan. So future vision, we already mentioned earlier, this is what's, where are we going to go in the future? Where are we going or where could we be in the future? Where could the brand be? We've already talked about where the brand is. We've already given a business update. We kind of know the current situation. So now it's, well, what's the future? Where do we want to go? Whether it's a year from now or five years, depending on how I'm writing this plan. So some things to consider here. What's the actual upside of your business? This is a question usually senior management will ask of businesses. Do you know what your upside is? Especially if it's an infant business or it's small or it's kind of like a younger business, they'll go, well, okay, I get that we could be big. Oh, we're five million today and maybe we could be big tomorrow, but what's big mean? Like what should be my expectation be? Should I like, is this gonna be a $10 million business or a $100 million business or a billion dollar business? So what's the upside or total opportunity size? Another question you can ask here is what's the shift you'll make in the category? So sometimes brands that are already bigger or further along, it's like, well, the upside isn't that we're gonna quadruple our business necessarily, but we could make a shift in the category, right, in some way. I'll show you some examples of these. Um, what's our brand's big aspiration? I love Mad Libs or fill in the blanks because they're easy tools to use to, to, to write things. So envision a world where blank. It's almost like those movie trailers with like the overdone voice that's at the beginning. The same voice is at the beginning of every movie trailer. In a world where blah, 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 there was one woman or one man that, you know, like in a world where, okay, fill in that blank. As a brand, we envision a world where this is true, where this is the way things are. Another one here, what would you be happy to achieve in five to 10 years? Now, I like this one for, like a lot of times if I'm writing a new strategy, I'll start to talk to senior management, just do interviews, just talk to people, and I'll try to get a sense of like, what's your expectation? What would you be happy with? Let's say, jump fast forward five years, 10 years from now, what would you be happy with in terms of the size of this business or what we would accomplish? And I start to have them play that back to me. Um, what would we be happy achieving in the next five to 10 years? Because then I can do a little bit of work and say, is that a realistic expectation or not? And I also know when I walk in the room, if what I'm sharing is different than what's gonna be in their minds. Some best practices, choose something aspirational. You want it to be inspirational. I'll show you uh, lots of examples, like I said. We wanna paint a picture of what the future could look like. I think pictures are worth a thousand words. Um, I'll show you examples of that as well. And then use numbers and data to so support it. So I think if you just pull something out of thin air and make it up and throw it on the page, a lot of times you'll get this reaction of like, they just don't believe you, right? So you need some sort of support of like, here's how I got there. Without getting too far into the weeds, just a little bit of an indication that says I did my homework. All right, some watch outs, all fluff and no substance. So the, what I just mentioned, if you don't do that, it can feel disconnected from reality. Non-binary goals. So we could never tell if we did it or not. You wanna be able to tell if you achieved a goal or not. And then being too conservative and just like sandbagging. So I wanna set an expectation that next year, we're only gonna grow 5% when I know we could probably get 10, but I don't wanna come in under we all want to get our bonus or whatever it is that we're working towards, right? So being too conservative, there's a risk in that because if you write a big strategic plan and then you present it and it misses the expectation on the wrong end, right? Like, oh, I thought this was a high growth business, but you're telling me we're only going to grow 5% next year. Like that number needs to be way higher. So you don't want that to happen as well. It's a little bit of a balancing act. So the next thing here is I want to talk about the difference between these words. So I mentioned earlier, if somebody in one company says marketing plan, brand plan, strategic plan, they can mean different things when they say that. The same thing is true here. Some people, when they say vision, objective, goals, they kind of mean different things. One person could say vision and mean objective. One person could say goals and mean a vision. And actually, I haven't even put on this page mission, purpose, and other things that people will tell you that you need nowadays, which I don't think you need. Um, so I'm gonna tell you the way I like to think about it. This is not right or wrong. You might look at this and go, actually, there's another way I think of this that I like better and that's fine. I'm just telling you that when we talk and we work for the rest of the day, this is how I'm using these terms. So a vision, 
I think of as a more aspirational stretch. So it's the ideal future state far out into the future. And I think really long term when I think of vision. So a picture of how things will be that does not exist today, but that you want to happen. But it's a, bi it's a big leap, right? It's not like something's going to happen. This is going to happen next year. You're basically answering the question, why does our brand exist? Like, what is it here to do or to fundamentally change? Now, in contrast to this objective, I think of objective, or I like to think of objective as being a little closer in, about five years. It's just the rough number I throw on it. But that, I think of an objective as a long-term business accomplishment. It's a little more tied to the business. So sometimes, like a vision might be, um, bring happiness to everyone in the world, right? And that may be great depending on what your brand purpose and mission and all these other things are. And that's a pretty lofty vision that you might never achieve. Ending world hunger, you know, like that's another vision. But the, but the objective more five years out is, can still be long-term and kind of tied to the business. I'll show you examples of these in a minute. So what will we achieve in the next five years? And then goals to me are those quantitative milestones, right? How will we know that we met the objective? What revenue share or profit would we obtain? That's now translating into like more big numerical goals like you saw in the OGSM. The big thing here is the difference between a vision and an objective. Because I think a lot of times when people serve up strategies, they might use one or the other, or they might be confused about which one they're showing. And neither is right or wrong, but you gotta know what you're showing, what your point of view is. If you wanna go after a really big lofty vision, fine. Just know that's what you're doing. You might want to at some point make it a little more tangible for people. And on the flip side, the same. You might be in this space and you might have a senior leader go, we, we, we need a bigger, more inspirational target. And then you kind of understand what you need to do. So here's some examples. Vision, I mentioned, end world hunger. That would be like a huge vision. Um, and maybe this relates to your business. Maybe you are a business that works in food service or you're a nonprofit that works in, um, you know, food, works on food shortages or like maybe that is tied to your business. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's like McDonald's could say, our new vision is to end world hunger. And that'd be fine. We, they'd probably get questions about how they're going to do that. So, but it's still, the point is it's very aspirational. Making people happy. That was a Disney one for a while. A computer on every desk in every home. This seems like absurd to say this now because it's like they're kind of there. But I don't know, was this 30 years ago, 40 years ago? IBM, well, this was their vision. And at the time, people thought they were crazy. There were people saying computers were useless. You'll never have them in people's homes. Now, of course, it's been realized. Um, bringing inspiration to, and innovation to every athlete in the world. At one point, this was Nike. So Nike was doing this as their vision. But again, you can see how these kind of lofty, hard to measure, right? But a little, maybe a little more inspirational. So if you're looking at objectives, you might have something like, it's a little closer in and tied to the business. So establishing ourselves as a household name. I, that could be a pretty lofty vision for a brand. If nobody knows who the brand is, going from there to being a household name, like, oh, that's, that's like a pretty cool vision. Um, being number one in every category. 100 million people served or I guess McDonald's is now billions and billions and billions. Um, this was actually one from a, uh, a craft business, a protein snack for every millennial occasion. Now there are some reasons I don't like this one, but I think it fits this middle bucket of objective, right? So you can see, oh, we're gonna, this, this hints at like portfolio expansion and innovation and trying to get into more occasions. And then goals are the obvious ones, sales, margin, top three in market share, maybe we reach two new markets. Does everybody understand the difference in how I'm laying these terms out? Okay. Now, for the purpose of what we're writing today, and the one I like to use for this exercise is in the middle. I like to stay in this territory. Now, as a company, you might feel like you need something like this, but I think it's hard to write a strategy against this more so than it is this, right? Like, like if you said our objective is to just make people happy, it'd be so vague that I'd be like, well, I don't know how to tell you to get there, right? So you, I think you want it to be tangible enough that you can build a, a roadmap to get there. So that's kind of my point of view. That's a sweet spot. I'll show you a couple examples of vision slides. So you can do this just in just one slide. You can paint a picture of like where we want to take the business and, do, and end it there. You could take multiple slides to do it. 
and there's a lot of different ways to do it, but I'll show you a couple examples. This is from a brand, and you can see here, here's the Spectrum, right? Um, this was a small brand in, I think this was in Surface Care, um, but this brand served kind of like a niche audience, and they're very small, less than $10 million was the size of this brand. And they were trying just to paint the picture of how big could this business be? What's an appropriate goal for us out into the future, five or 10 years out? Well, they had done some research and they had these five different consumer segments on this green spectrum from not green to most green. So this is a naturals brand um, in the surface care space. And they were basically saying, look, we, th we feel like competitors one and two target this segment, competitors three and four this one. We serve a segment that's underserved or not served well by these other competitors. And they have a different kind of profile or mindset that makes us relevant to them. And then they just put numbers to it. And this was from um, IRI or Nielsen, Nielsen, or maybe it was Spins, one of those data points. And they said, well, these are the size of the competitors in these spaces. We feel like if we essentially stole one in 10, like, I forget what the exact number was, but they did like a rough math exercise and said, if we just took a minimal amount of share from these competitors, from this segment where we're more relevant, pretty quickly you'd have a $50 million business. So it was like by making a small shift, it would result in 50 million. You could say a bigger shift would be 100 or 200 or 300, but I think they were trying to be also be like semi-realistic. And all they're doing here is they're setting expectation with senior management. We're less than 10 million now. In five years, we could be 50. We're gonna show you a plan for how we think we could make that happen. That was basically their vision. If you find this lesson useful, be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons and check out the links in the description for more information on trainings like these.